We've seen when combining one value of a discrete random variable with another value from a second random variable that these are the formulas for computing the joint parameters. Combining normal distributions works the same way. Expected value, which is mean average, is found by adding the means or expected values together. For this, the variables do not have to be independent. Standard deviation is found by adding variances to get the correct variance and then taking the square root. Independence is required for us to trust the standard deviation formula. A local coffee shop allows customers to grind coffee into a regular bag or a large bag. The weights of coffee in the regular bags are normally distributed with a mean of 12.6 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.4 ounces. The weights of large bags are normally distributed with a mean of 16.8 ounces and standard deviation of 0.5 ounces. If one randomly selected bag of regular coffee and one randomly selected bag of large coffee were combined, find the probability that the sum of the weights exceeds 30 ounces. We cannot solve this by trying to dream up all combinations of weights from each distribution separately. Instead, we need to find the joint probability distribution. We merely calculate the joint distribution, shape, center, and spread, by realizing that since both random variables were normal, then the sum of the weights will also have a normal distribution. That's our shape. We can add the means to get the new mean of 29.4 ounces, and we can find the square root of the sums of the variances to calculate the joint standard deviation of 0.64 ounces. Make sure you conceptualize this joint distribution. Every score on the x-axis is the sum of weights of one regular bag and one large bag. For example, the 28.0 implies the sum of the two bags is 28 ounces. This could literally occur with an infinite number of combinations. One possible scenario would be a regular bag weighing 12.22 ounces and one large bag weighing 15.78 ounces. Once we identify the joint distribution, this is a typical probability involving a normal distribution. We show the work by showing that we are calculating the probability of getting a z-score associated with any weight above 30 ounces, and then we use the t-table or the normal CDF on the calculator to determine the probability to be 0.174. Question. Was it okay to conclude independence of the weights for the sake of calculating standard deviation? Answer. Yes, since we randomly selected one of each. However, if what we randomly selected was the same customer and then we used both of her weights, these would not be independent weights. We would not expect random fluctuation about the mean in both cases. For example, she might be the type of customer who likes to fill the bags as full as possible. Knowing she has a weight with a high z-score of regular bag weights increases the chances that she will do the same for a large bag. These then would be dependent variables, therefore we cannot trust our standard deviation formula to produce the correct standard deviation.